I've seen better games and all the goals from Patrick Kane. I've seen better games and the bottom drops out. Yeah. Woo -hoo! Is this the we are at the week. Yeah. Can't get any better. Hello, welcome to Hawks Recap. Game 34 is done and over with, and good riddance. The Hawks lose this one by a score of 4-0. to zero. It's their third loss to the Stars of this season. And Hawks coming into this game riding a five-game winning streak, but it all just comes crashing down as the Stars win handily and just not a very good showing from the Hawks. Now, the first period actually started off pretty decently for the Hawks. They seemed to be outplaying the Stars. It was tough sledding. It wasn't, like, completely outplaying. But it seemed like they were kind of controlling the play a little bit more. It wasn't it wasn't anything easy or smooth, but they had more chances, it looked like. Now, both defenses, I thought, played pretty darn well in that first period, and both goaltenders playing very solid as well. Bishop did allow some rebounds that the Hawks just couldn't get to. I thought the Stars defense did a really good job uh, clearing those loose pucks away. It would have been nice to be able to capitalize on those, but... Hawks could not. The Hawks did, however, hit two posts in that first period. One from Kane, one from Debrinkat. Uh, some glorious chances, but just could not get the puck to go in. If they somehow score one or both of those, this game could be completely different. But they don't get the puck luck there, and instead it's the Stars that take the 1-0 lead. Unfortunately, it comes from some bad bounces for the Hawks. The Stars on a power play and Connor Murphy blocks the initial shot and it comes to a Stars player and then Forsling blocks the pass to go cross crease to Ben, but the puck comes right back to the Stars player and then they were able to complete the pass and, and Crawford just has no chance. Jamie Ben backdoor scores it, puts the Stars up one nothing going into the first intermission. So the Hawks outshot the Stars 11-7 in the first period. They're outplaying the Stars a little bit, but they're down by one on the scoreboard due to some bad luck. It, you know, it happens. It happens. You kind of just kind of, you know what, don't worry about it. It's all right. We'll get this one back. There's plenty of time left in this game, 40 minutes left. There's plenty of time to score a goal, two goals, three goals. Plenty of time. No big deal. The problem is... Basically, the opposite of that happens because the second period just was god-awful. One minute into the second period, the Stars get the puck into the offensive zone. They get a shot from the point, and Roussel tips the puck in front past Crawford. Great tip. Nothing Crawford could do about it, and the Stars go up 2 to nothing early in the second period. Now, Roussel would really lead the charge here, him and his fellow Stars companions I thought really did a good job in frustrating the Hawks just kind of getting a little bit chippy and kind of getting under the Hawks skins and it seemed to frustrate the Hawks and they didn't really have any answer for it they tried to kind of you know rustle their feathers as well but it just wasn't working and it doesn't really work if you can't put the puck in the net so uh, Stars did a great job frustrating the Hawks and it led to a couple more goals in the second period Six minutes into the period, the Stars would go on the power play thanks to a Ryan Hartman tripping infraction. The Stars would get a shot from the left dot, and Connor Murphy would actually block the shot, but the puck would then find its way to Sagan right in front of the net, and Corey Crawford, having to react from that block shot, has to slide over to the center of the crease, and Sagan just forehand, backhand, and... Puts it past Crawford. <laughs> Crawford has no chance once again. It's just kind of uh, just in desperation mode from the block shot. And and the Stars are up 3-0. I think the thing that frustrated me the most at this point, besides the Hawks not playing well in general, was the fact that people are going to look at the box score, the game stats. And they're going to look, hey, Crawford. What are you doing? You've given up three goals. You're not even halfway through this game. None of the goals Crawford could do anything about. I don't care who you put in that situation. Put Bishop in there. 
Put Rene, put Bobrovsky, put Holtby, put Price. I don't care who you put in that situation. They are letting in three goals in this game. It weren't his fault. And then on top of that, you got Stars fans, you know, doing the Crawford chant. And Crawford, Crawford. I, Stars fans, we get it. You took Minnesota's team. Now you're taking their chance. Calm down. Lay off a little bit. It's not even his fault. I guess the chant kind of works because I'm kind of frustrated by it. Now enough about Crawford and how this will probably, unfairly, negatively affect his potential Vizina candidacy. The Hawks didn't get their first shot in the second period until halfway through it. So I don't. It doesn't even matter if he saves all of them because they're the Hawks can't generate any offense right now. They're not getting back into this game with that kind of effort. But hey, you know what? Let's let's lift our spirits a little bit. Plenty of time. There's half of this game still left to go. You get a goal right before intermission. Cut the lead down to two. It's a brand new ball game. You go into the third with renewed confidence, renewed energy. Good things can still happen in this game. And the Stars score with under four minutes to play. Sagan would score his second goal of the game thanks to the Stars winning a puck battle in the offensive zone. Nothing new. They did that about a hundred times, probably even more in this game. The Hawks just were awful along the boards. Awful winning puck battles, just not physically up to the task. Pretty much just like, here, you have it. We insist. Stars take a 4-0 lead into the third period, and honestly, I'm not even going to talk about the third period because that period was just Stars dumping the puck in and turtling and making the Hawks go 200 feet every single rush, and the Hawks aren't playing well enough in this game to go 200 feet, so nothing happened. Not only that, but the Hawks got their first power play with five minutes left to go in this game. Down 4-0. Woo! So the Hawks lose... 4-0 to the Stars in this game. Third loss already to the Stars of the season. It just seems like this year is going to be a year that the Stars have our number. It happens every single year. There's one team that has our number. Sometimes it's the Stars. Sometimes it's the Predators. Sometimes it's the Avalanche. Sometimes it's the Blues. It This year is just going to be the Stars. It just That's the way it's going to be. But if we look at the big picture here, these past three games against Central Division opponents, we won two out of three. And two of those games were on the road. I'm going to take those results every single time. It just would have been nice to get all six points out of these three games, especially considering how poor our record has been so far against Central Division opponents. And especially how this Central Division is seemingly shaping up so far this year. Every point's going to matter. Up next for the Hawks, they travel to New Jersey to play a pretty darn good Devils team. With the re result and effort in this game, I'm going to assume Coach Q makes some lineup changes. I'm guessing Sharp's probably back in the lineup. I'm guessing that Ruda and Franzen are probably back in the lineup. I'd love to hear who you think is going to make up the lineup against the Devils on Saturday. Hawks. I am kind of glad you got this out of the way because Saturday is my birthday. So if you could just win and have a better performance, that would be that would be great. Thanks for watching this episode of Hawks Recap. I hope you got some sort of enjoyment out of this one. Let me know your thoughts on the game and the team's performance down in the comment section below. Like, share, subscribe at your own risk. I appreciate it if you do though. Stay safe, make good decisions, and I'll see you next time.